What metaphysics is, is it's going to the first principles. And this is why Muslims always began their sciences with the ten mabadi, the, 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 the starting places of their sciences, to let you know a definition. We have now, right next door, a uh, graduating class from Berkeley that are getting BAs, a lot of them are getting BAs, Bachelor of Arts. If you ask them what that BA, what, what are the arts that you are now a bachelor in, um, most of them really, I don't think, could answer that question. Because the BA, we inherited the BA from an ancient tradition, which is the tradition of the liberal arts, these, these sciences that are supposed to free us from the fetters of our faulty thinking. And, but, but now, it, it really doesn't have any meaning. And a lot of our students now are given incredible assumptions uh, from their teachers, but they're never taught what are the metaphysical foundations of the civilization. They're, they're never taught about those first principles uh, of the civilization. And just to give you a few, very quickly, uh, one of them is that um, anything that can't be proved uh, empirically or is not true by definition, what they call an analytic proposition. Uh, anything other than, than those two, in, either empirically provable or something that's true by definition, what they call the verification principle, is, is gibberish. From, from, from gibberish is actually from Jabir, because uh, Jabir ibn Hayyan, his books on chemistry were translated into Latin. They were so difficult to understand, the Latins called them uh, the, the medievals called them gibberish. So that's, but, but literally, uh, metaphysics, uh, theology, uh, theology is now seen as meaningless. If you, may, if you say there is no God but God, many, many people in the humanities and philosophy departments today will say that's a meaningless statement. That's an assumption of the civilization. Another foundational assumption that people don't really think about is, is, is that science, do, do we call, for instance, is Isaac Newton a scientist? Because in many ways, this civilization would not recognize Isaac Newton as a scientist because he had many, many uh, metaphysical uh, assumptions about his, uh, his work and, and his worldview. Um, he, he believed, for instance, deeply in God. He believed in the Bible. Uh, he believed that the world was a supernatural event. Our modern science says that you cannot have recourse to the supernatural to explain anything. And this is why Darwinism makes so much sense because you've eliminated the, the, the metaphysical perspective. You've eliminated the divine. So you cannot explain being by something outside of being. You cannot explain being by something that cannot be proved empirically. And therefore, we have to determine where did life come from without God? Where did life come from? That is a metaphysical assumption. And that's why Darwin is so compelling, because he's making that assumption. He, he's assuming that we cannot have recourse to the divine, because if we do, it's no longer scientific. That is an assumption of this civilization. That's not an assumption of our civilization. So these are really important uh, distinctions that are, are often not made. Another one is the idea, for instance, that belief is irrational. Or belief, people say, belief, I, why should I have faith in something? Because faith is believing without evidence. This, this is a very common trope in modern culture. Uh, you'll hear it from all the, what they call the new atheists, people like Sam Harris, who will literally say, you know, faith is belief without evidence. That has never been true for the Abrahamic tradition. Um, one of the most important uh, aspects of the Abrahamic traditions was to ground their faith in reason. And, and they gave very, you cannot study, you, if you take a survey course on religion, like the philosophy of religion, they'll do St. Thomas Aquinas, his five proofs for the existence of God. And they give them in very superficial, these truncated versions, reductive. Um, you have to spend a great deal of time to understand what Aquinas, and three out of the five he got from the Muslims. But you have to, you have to work very hard to understand why he came to those conclusions. The Summa is a summary of those. He has an entire metaphysical approach to those five proofs for the existence of God, which would used to take about 15 years. 
before you could actually study those and really understand those rules. Now they're taught in, in a philosophy course on religion as if, well, here it is. Here's their proofs for the existence of God. No, those aren't the proofs. Those are the conclusions of the proofs. Um, and, and the same is true for the Kalam cosmological argument that the Muslims embedded their um, worldview in. The Kalam cosmological argument takes a good deal of time to understand. It, it can't be understood uh, simplistically. So our civilization, it's, it's, it's not my contention, uh, it's the contention of some of the most brilliant minds in our civilization right now. Um, one of them is Sayyid Naqib al Atas, who is, who is a true metaphysician, uh, who, who really believes that the root of our crisis is a metaphysical crisis. And until we address the metaphysical crises, we will only be dealing with the superficial.